Hi, thanks for tuning in to Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much for being here with us, for taking the time to watch the video, and hopefully you'll learn a lot from what we've put together for you here. Anyway, I'd like to share a few more important points shared by the exorcists with all of you again, but before that, please allow me to just quickly summarize what we've learned together from the previous video. When we go to confession, it weakens the demons. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, well, you know, a long time. We have to work on humility because once we break our pride, we are breaking the demon's ability to influence us. Demons enter our home through the doors and windows, and that is why Father Ripperger recommends that we place the Benedict medals on the windows and door. There are a few more important points shared in the video, and so if you have the time, please check the video out if you haven't watched it. Anyway, now let's get back to this video then. I'll kick this off with Father Ripperger again, and what he said about what the demons love. All of this should tell you the demons love place. They love places just as much as we do. Why? Well, it's kind of like this. You know, when people get married, wherever the guy proposed to her, the woman very often has an affection for that place in her heart, because that's where a good thing happened, right? And God's the same way. We bless places, and so um, it's a good place. Well, demons are the opposite. When very simple things happen to you, they just they like it because they get a certain power out of the place where you often have control over it and things like that, and so they, they like places quite a bit. Um, and this is based upon the fact that sin or the evil committed in the place. This is why, okay, they like places and they like things, because they like taking possession of things. This is one of the reasons why when I read the new book of blessings, I was just absolutely floored. I wasn't scandalized, because I'm pretty much beyond that, but I was floored that they said, you don't bless the things, you bless the people. That is just absolute insanity, and whoever put that out should be flogged. Because the fact of the matter is that what they were doing is allowing demons to gain greater access to people in their lives. It was just spiritually short-sighted. If you discover that something demonic or, uh, or by witchcraft is done in the house or some other place, it should be exercised. And also make sure it's, um, uh, it's, make sure it's permissible to offer mass there, but very often saying mass in a place that's been possessed will help significantly to break the possession. For the following clip of Father Ripperger, I can definitely see that it's not going to go down well with some people, and you'll see why. And it has something to do with the demon of the air and global warming. Demons of the air. Now, what happened was, is just as there were angels that were assigned the task of taking care of the weather and things of that sort, when the demons who were part of that rank fell, at least this is my understanding, when they fell, they took, some of them took possession of the air. Now, some of them say that they actually possession the air because they, they vacillated and so they weren't cast all the way down into hell. That's just not, that's just bad theology. And it's not based upon um, sound reasoning. But what happened is, is there were certain, that they, they took possession there. Now, what this means is whenever we say, whenever we do something, um, whenever we curse or we do something like that, we use bad speech, what will happen is the, um, what will very often happen is, is that the demons will take possession of that particular error. It can have a cumulative effect. Well, how do we know this? There's an actual ritual. It's in the, it's in the ritual of Toledo. It's, uh, it's in a book I give it to, which I give to priests. And um, in it, there is an, uh, an exorcism of storms and tempests. And I'll give you an example. One time, um, a deacon, because the deacons can do certain things, um, I mean, so can priests. This guy is now a priest in the fraternity. He, <clears throat> there was just this really bad hailstorm that was just pounding them. So he started that, and when he finished the last line, it just stopped. What this means is, is that it can have a cumulative effect. Have you ever heard of global warming? But don't get me wrong, I don't think there is global warming. I do think that, there, that, there, that the, the behavior of the weather patterns is getting strange. For our lady already predicted that at La Salette, <coughs> um, that the weather patterns would change. And the reason, one of the reasons they're changing is because there's more and more demonic influence over nature because man's being sinful with respect to nature. And so he's ceding control over these things to the demonic. Um, we can also have physics, we can also be based somewhat in the science, but the science obviously is, the jury is out. I mean, even though the popular people are all heading in one direction, a lot of the scientists, the scientists are really serious about it, said, well, we don't really know. Anyway, there are a few more highlights that I'd like to share with you in this video, and the first of these is from Monsignor Rossetti. I think what he's saying here basically summarizes our society today. And for me personally, this drives me even more to share what these priests are sharing online, either through their lectures and interviews, 
Just to point this out though, the music is already there in the original video, just in case you're wondering why there's one in this video. Got a call from, I think, a young woman or a guy from where was from New York a few months ago, and the person said, my faith is kind of wavering, and I want you to prove to me that there are demons. So I did a Zoom call with a person, and I showed him some photos that I have, which are quite striking, and he said, okay. So he got it. Uh, so I think the, I think people today, they don't accept what their parents or the grandparents taught them about religion, and but they wanted to find something from themselves. They want something that they can experience. And demons are something people say, oh, okay, I can, I can experience that. I can, there's something about that, which I don't have to worry about the, these guys in white, these guys in pointy hats and all these old white males, you know. But but there is something that actually, you know, it's, it's really real. Like you can grab onto an experience, you know. So I think that's one of the reasons why the subject is so interesting to people, because something really does happen. And after listening to what Monsignor Rossetti just said there, I think it makes it easier for us to understand why a lot of people are a huge fan of horror movies and watching a lot of those paranormal videos. For example, when Father Lampert was asked during one particular interview to share what he had experienced during the exorcisms. You can see why this type of things appeal to those who love this type of things that makes them feel scared and on edge. We definitely can't deny that there's a solid fan base to this type of things, because if that isn't the case, then the movies wouldn't be making millions at the box office. You know, the, the craziest or the wildest, I would say, are always those that happened at the beginning when I began this ministry. Hmm. So I began back in 2005. So I've been doing this ministry now for 18 years. And the reason I say at the beginning is because it's something new. I'm getting acclimated to doing the ministry. And I would say that the people I deal with today, the same theatrics are there, but maybe I just become more, I don't know, accustomed to dealing with these things. <laughs> and it's almost a normal part of my priestly ministry so that it doesn't really phase me that much anymore. Again, because I know the power of God is certainly greater than the power of evil. I had I did an exorcism uh, one time, and when the demon manifested, the uh, the demon bit the person's lip that they were possessing, and then blood was coming out of their mouth, and then took the person's hand and put it in the blood, and then drew a pentagram on the wall in mm -hmm. the room with the blood, and then began to howl and scream and and foam at the mouth and throw out profanities and that type of thing. So you're looking at a demon that's manifesting this hideous, grotesque look, the howls and the screams, blood pouring out of the mouth, and now there's a pentagram on the wall. A pentagram would be a demonic symbol, like an upside-down star in a circle. It's the notion. Usually it's associated with the devil. And I think as we're approaching Halloween, it's a good idea to share a few more good reminders from Father Lampert. I hope you'll find these useful. You've heard him shared this before, but it doesn't hurt to listen again as a reminder. The first is the devil knows those who are working to defeat him. The devil certainly knows those who are working to defeat him. And usually in the case when an exorcist walks in, the demon will actually try to hide, so to speak. Demons don't really want to be in the spotlight because when they're in the spotlight, when they're manifesting, then the battle against them can take place. So oftentimes they may kind of retreat, so to speak, meaning there's still that attachment to the person, but the manifestations are not there because the devil would want the exorcist to believe that either the person is not truly possessed or that the demon has retreated and is no longer manifesting in this person. And so we might even, a good way to look at it would be that in an exorcism, a demon is commanded to return that which it has stolen, namely a person created in the image and likeness of God. And the way that they're forced to return that person is to uh, cast them into the light of Jesus Christ. So they would want to retreat to the shadows so the battle against them would not begin. Number two, conversion is an ongoing process. We never say that I accepted Christ and now it, it, it's done. No, that marks the beginning of a journey of faith. And we know that on that journey of faith, maybe we step outside of that faith at times. We sin. And when we sin, we should repent. And when we repent, we draw closer to God. But when we don't repent or try to justify our sinfulness, we move ourselves further and further away from God. And in doing so, we could be putting ourselves 
within the realm of the devil. And number three, selling one's soul to the devil. So a perfect possession would be someone unites their free will with the will of the demon that's trying to possess them. And when they unite their free will with that of the demon, they live in a harmonious relationship. And because they're living in harmony, then there really is no need to manifest because the devil knows that they have won this person over. I must admit, I've been listening to a lot of Father Stephen Imbarato lately, and although he's not an exorcist, I'm going to include Father Imbarato more frequently in future videos because I find listening to him has been helpful in my own spiritual growth, and I hope you'll feel the same way too. All right, prayer is communication with Jesus, focusing on Jesus, uh, but how do you focus on Jesus? All right, so maybe that's the follow-up question. How do you focus on Jesus? What aspect of the gospel, what aspect of Jesus' life do you focus on? Uh, my answer to that question, it's not necessarily the only right answer. My answer to that question is the focus of our daily life should be getting to heaven and bringing as many people with us as possible. And if we do what we need to do, if we do what we need to do to get to heaven, we're going to bring other people with us. There's no helping that. That is going to happen. And we should be resolutely determined on our journey to the new Jerusalem. Um, and so how do you do that? Well, you stay focused on Jesus. But what aspect of Jesus? Right? What aspect of Jesus? Does he call us to be prophet, priest, king? Yes, he does. Does he call us to be teacher? Yes. Right, but how are we going to achieve our eternal salvation? Well, in today's gospel, Jesus gives us the Luke version of the Lord's Prayer and says, as we forgive others, so we will be forgiven, right? And then, of course, we know what Christ, Christ said, that what you did for the least of my brethren, you do for me. And so those are the two aspects of Christ's mercy. This is nothing new. This is what I talk about all the time, uh, that we are called to immerse ourselves in Christ's mercy. All good things come from Jesus. We ought to share those good things with other, right? Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, visit the imprisoned, right? All right, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, the unborn. Those are the least of Christ's brethren. That is what we should focus on in sharing all good things that Jesus gave us, including our gifts with those who are the least of Christ's brethren. And then not to hold grudges against anyone, to forgive everyone, understanding that Jesus always forgives us. This is, this is basically being merciful to all people, giving people the benefit of the doubt, right? Not tolerating ongoing sin, but giving people the benefit of the doubt. If we see people in ongoing sin, what do we do? We pray and we fast. So the focus of our daily life should be our spiritual life. The focus of our spiritual life should be prayer. Uh, the focus of our prayer should be listening to Jesus, asking him what his will is for us, and then doing his will with the idea that we want to achieve our eternal salvation. We want to be resolutely determined, focused, laser focus on our eternal salvation, right? That's, that's it. Anyway, that is all for the video this time. I hope you've learned a lot from this video. If there's any suggestion or any feedback at all, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. For those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation in the description box below and from the bottom of my heart. I can't thank all of you enough for your continuous support, contribution, and prayer. And until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God